Adele, a very good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Um, I suppose uh, we're going to see a lot of this over the course of the next few weeks and months. Uh, many people think that it must come to an end sooner rather than later, but uh, it's difficult to get any kind of um, agreement out of Hamas, isn't it? Well, it's see, his main problem is actually with the President Biden. Obviously, he's doing it for internal reasons. Yes. He came exactly the day the uh, Trump was trying to get the cameras there because of his conviction. Right. Uh, then you have President Biden actually rewording three different proposals. One was American, one with Israeli, and one came from the Egyptian, different rewording. The problem with that is Hamas does not speak with one voice. It's a terrorist organization. Mm. It's not uh, a state. It's, you don't know who you're speaking with. That's number one. Number two, the problem with the, the Netanyahu, uh, Israeli prime minister, and his coalition government, uh, he's got two right wingers there, the Minister of Finance, who is sort of the uh, National Religious Zionist Party. And then you get the, uh, uh, the Defense Minister, who is actually the leader uh, uh, of, again, the National Front, the far right party. And then the, between them, there are 14 seats in the Knesset. And it's written to pull out of the government if Bibi Netanyahu does not finish the job, which is making Israel safe by totally disarming Hamas and dismantling all infrastructure. And Hamas is not going to agree to that. No, they're never going to agree to that. But there's also no massively international coalition building for that to happen either, is it? I mean, Israel kind of on their own, as it were. Nobody's really saying that they should be allowed to destroy Hamas, um, apart from one or two individual politicians. There's no government supporting them in that aim. There isn't. I mean, the, 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 the different issues is when you go to the neighboring country like Egypt, uh, we can really can pressurize Hamas much further than that because mm. any any supplies coming through them, uh, meetings happen them. Then you got Qataris who finance them as well as the Iranians, and they have the leadership mm. there in Qatar. Uh, on the other hand, the get the Israelis public opinion have been changing, but within Israel, the war is still very popular. Netanyahu is very unpopular. I mean, he's unpopular from before the war. Yeah. Uh, he was asleep on the job. I mean, it took Hamas years to build all these tunnels and this infrastructure. Well, what were actually the government of Israel was doing? So the government actually, and, and he is worried that if the war ends in a way that does not appear to be victorious, mm. he's going to be toppled out and be voted out. Well, that's right. And is there a risk as well at the moment? I saw um, some um, some images at the weekend of some big fires in, in northern Israel, close to the Lebanese border, uh, that there were rockets being fired in from Lebanon. Is there a danger that the spread uh, of the conflict goes to Lebanon? Yes. I mean, speaking of rockets, Hamas, by the way, is still firing rockets. Course, yeah. And they still have the ability to fire rockets. Then when Hamas gets really squeezed, then the Iranians will pull the strings for Hezbollah fire rockets against Israel. But I think the Israelis gave the Lebanese government a very clear message that the war is going to be escalating. Mm. The other factor is also the West Bank. We actually, the settlers there are not behaving properly. Mm. Uh, they are represented in the government by the Minister of Finance there, close to them. And again, they need to be arranged. It's, it's, it's going to be quieter. But if the West Bank explodes, then it's going to be really all hell breaking loose. And that's why all parties need to actually put a lot of pressure to end this conflict as soon as possible. Yeah. And, I mean, do you see any likelihood of that being hurried along because of the presidential election in the U.S.? Well, I think it's it, 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 presidential election in the U.S., like any any internal elections, internal issue is the economy and it's actually how people fill their tanks with petrol and all of that. But if it's some kind of a change um, happened there, uh, that it become crucial to end the war, then we can see a lot of pressure. The only problem is that the, the Americans are pressurizing one side only, pressurizing the Israelis. There's, not, there's no way, no leverage of pressurizing Iran and pressurizing Hamas to actually end their terrorism. I mean, one thing I, I personally believe, if President Trump was in the White House, most probably 7th of October, terrorist attack by Hamas would have never happened. Most probably, uh, Ukraine would not be invaded. And I think people will still say, OK, if it drags on, wait, Trump might be elected, then something can happen.
Indeed. Adele, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Adele Darwish, their Middle Eastern commentator on the latest offer uh, from Israel to Hamas. Um, but so far, uh, nobody's taking anybody up on it. Uh